Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and this is Spud from Electric Classic Cars. And today's video is going to be a tech talk. So if you're into tech stuff, stay tuned. If not, go and search out some cute videos on cats or something. Um, what is t today's tech talk about? Well, it's a subject I get asked quite a bit in shows, which is why do electric cars like this have things like this in it, a radiator? So today's tech talk is all about thermal management. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into EV, let's talk about where we've come from. And that is good old fashioned engines. And in this one, there's a big, massive V8. How big is this one? Can you remember? It's about seven litre. I think on the last video, people were saying it was either 6.8 or 7.2. 7.2, it's definitely yeah. 7.2. So it's a 7.2 litre V8 in this. And this isn't the most efficient thing. So let's get into the engine bay and have a chat about that. Now, when I'm talking about efficiency, I'm not talking about miles per gallon here. I'm talking about the efficiency of putting energy in via petrol, if you like, and turning that into motion. Now, an engine is, a modern engine is roughly around about 30% efficient. That means of the energy that you put in, only 30% of that is turned into motion. The rest is lost to friction and heat and noise. And a, an old V8 like this is probably even less efficient, probably more like 20% efficient. Now, we're going to be talking mainly on heat today and how we deal with heat. Um, and an en engine like this, you know, if we didn't deal with the heat um, management, it would essentially seize and destroy itself. Uh, and why is that? Because essentially what you're doing is you're taking the energy and you're blowing that into, you know, an explosion, if you like. And a lot of that heat then goes out the exhaust. That's 30% of the energy that you put in goes out as heat out of the exhaust. And another 30% then is having to take the heat out of the engine and cool it down via these radiators at the front. So again, 30% of the energy that you put in via fuel, you have to get rid of via the radiators. And you know, there's one big radiator at the front here, you've got two fans there, and the temperature that an engine likes to work at is around about, say, 75 to 105 degrees Celsius, or put something down for Fahrenheit down the bottom. So these actually run quite hot, and anybody that's you know, seen in films, if you like, taking a radiator cap off and steam coming out, you know, these run hot. And that's because a, a petrol or diesel engine is a very inefficient thing. In fact, it's a converter. And it's not a converter of money into noise, as you know, my dad used to say when I used to do drag racing, that engine's just a converter of money into noise, which is kind of true. But it's a very efficient way of converting energy into heat as an engine, and it's a very inefficient way of turning energy into motion. Now, on that note, remember the 30% efficiency of an engine. Now let's talk about electric motors. Now, on the other hand, with EVs, they're much more efficient. So this is a Tesla large drive unit. It's an induction AC motor, and this little baby is about 90% efficient. And the very latest generation of Tesla motors, which is this one over here, out of a Model 3. This is a permanent magnet motor, and this is around about 4% more efficient again, so 94% efficient, um, this motor here. Now, it's not strictly speaking true when I say 90%, 94%, etc., because there's what's called efficiency maps, because the efficiency of an engine or a motor changes depending upon where you are in the rev range of it, if you like. Um, so I'll put up a little like image of the efficiency map for this and this, because one uh, mystery that came up um, uh, a while back when Tesla moved to um, permanent magnet motors was, how can 4% more efficiency of a motor result in 10 plus more percent of range? So 4% more efficient, and I'm getting 10 plus more efficiency of range. Do you know why? No. Tim has a confused look on his face. <laughs> and it's because, we'll put up the uh, efficiency map here, it's what's called an efficiency island, if you like. The, the amount of time um, that this motor stays, say, peak efficiency, 94%, I think it is, is much more than an induction motor. 
So the area underneath the graph or above the graph, if you like, 94% uh, is quite large, whereas an induction motor, peak efficiency is quite a small area. So there you go, 90 to 94% efficient uh, electric um, uh, motors. And that's why you still need a radiator, because that 10% of inefficiency compared to 70% inefficiency of an engine needs to be dealt with. And that is usually heat, because you know, there's not much noise, if you like, that comes from this. Obviously, there's a bit of friction, but primarily it's heat management that we need to deal with. So 10% of the energy that goes into this, or 6% that goes into this, still needs to be dealt with with thermal management and radiators. So let's have a chat about radiators. Now, time to give you a quick run through of how a coolant system works. First of all, you need a tank to store the coolant. Second of all, what is coolant? It's a 50-50 mix, depending on where you are in the, country, in the world and how cold it gets. But on average, it's a 50-50 mix of water and glycol. Um, glycol is there to help it uh, prevent it from freezing, if you like. So you've got a header tank here that stores the coolant. Then you have a pump. Here's a pump here. That's your in and that's your out. That then pumps it out of here, the bottom, and then pumps it into a radiator or sometimes the motor first. Um, now that would then pump it in at the top and then through the radiator. And how does a radiator work? Well, essentially it's got lots and lots of ways here. Each one of these lines that you see here is a, a very thin tube where the coolant goes through, goes through and then goes out of the bottom and then it goes into the motor. So the coolant then comes in here on a Tesla large drive unit and goes through the motor and then into the uh, inverter in there and then out here. And the keen eyed uh, amongst you will also notice there's a little tube that comes up here. So it diverts a little bit of coolant around and to the um, plate over here. So if you come around here, Tim, you'll see. So the coolant comes through here and then just cools here and what's that for? That's cooling the oil down in the gear reduction unit. And then it all comes out via there and then goes back in the header tank. So it comes back in here, but there's a couple of things to mention here and they're very critical if you're doing an EV conversion yourself is this is a low pressure system. It's not like in a car radiator where the uh, pressurized cap is quite high pressure. If you're too high pressure with a Tesla system, you will essentially blow the seals out inside a Tesla um, uh, motor or the, actually in the inverter. There's little seals, uh, O-rings, and they'll get blown out. So it's a very low pressure system, and some people actually don't even take the risk and run a zero pressure, which means there's a little hole and a, and a drain coming out. Um, but also, this is your pump. Or this is actually a Tesla pump. But what you want to do with um, the coolant system is not just run it all the time, but actually, you know, or you do kind of run, run it all the time, but at different um, uh, flow rates, if you like. And you do that via a pump like this, which is what's called PWM control. That's pulse width modulation control. And that varies the amount of flow that the coolant is, you know, uh, that the pump is putting through. So PWM um, controlled pump and also fans. So at certain temperatures, the fans will come on because usually it's airflow coming through from motion, but at some point the fans might come on. Now don't forget an electric motor runs at a lot lower temperature than an engine. So um, electric motor, for instance, a Tesla, and I'm going to stick to Tesla because we started on Tesla and I'll finish on Tesla. Um, those motors if they get up to about 80 degrees, that's pretty much on the limit of the motor. And well, probably not the motor, they can run hotter, but definitely the inverter. So once a Tesla motor inverter um, drive unit, if you like, gets up to 80 degrees, you're done. And it'll start thermally cut cutting back at around about 70 degrees. And that's where things like fans and PWM pumps come in, because you know, they will start you know, ramping up the flow rate and putting the fans on as it's getting hotter and hotter. But that's nowhere near the 75 to 105 degrees temperature that an engine runs at. And usually you don't get much uh, over 40 degrees. So 40 degrees is the happy temperature for a Tesla motor. 
and 75 to 105 degrees is the happy temperature for an engine. But the keen-eyed amongst you will all to be wondering, what's this lot over here? And that's what we're going to talk about next, because not only does a battery, uh, not only, I've given the game away now, not only does an in, uh, a motor get cooled, but also the batteries need to be thermally managed as well. So let's have a talk about batteries before we get into the radiators themselves. Now, batteries are a little bit like humans. They like to be warm, but not too hot, and definitely not too cold. They're Goldilocks zone, if you like, as to where they're, you know, just right. is around about 20 degrees. Um, below zero, really don't like it. Above 40 degrees, and definitely above 50 degrees, no, 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 don't like that either. Um, and I definitely noticed that when I did a drag race a while back um, with Carwow with my Land Rover Defender. It was around about zero degrees that day and I wanted to go straight into it so I had no time to heat the, the, the battery. And I was just about beating the V8 Land Rovers. Normally I'd be way ahead. Um, so I definitely notice it on a cold day if your battery isn't up to temperature, how, you know, the performance of the car is affected. And anybody with a Tesla that puts it into ludic ludicrous mode, you know, have to wait until the battery is up to temperature and then it says, you know, off you can go. Uh, and that's because when a battery is warm, it can give lots and lots of amps out. When it's cold, it's a little bit like a sprinter doing a 100 meter sprint without warming up and stretching. It won't be as efficient and, you know, the, the times, if you like, if you go drag racing, won't be as good. So, Temperature-wise, where, where does it like to be? As I say, 20 degrees, 40 degrees, you know, it's starting to get a little bit hot, so, you know, all the fans and, you know, pumps will be going full blast then. And down below zero degrees is where a heater would come into it. So you actually have to heat batteries up, and I'll cover that in a minute. But how do you actually thermally manage batteries? Well, there's a number of different ways to do it. In the olden days, it would be air-cooled, so you just, like, you know, throw air through the battery pack but now you know people have or companies have realized that it's critical to get the thermal management right on batteries to extend their life and that's why you'll see some early EVs the range is drastically reduced that's because they weren't thermally managed well nowadays you know Tesla are getting you know hundreds of thousands of miles out of their battery packs and you know with minimal um, uh, battery degradation and that's because the thermal management is so spot on now. So how do you do that? Well here is a battery pack we're just getting made up now lots and lots of cell taps to monitor the cell voltages and the black wires here are, um, are thermistors to monitor the temperatures and on these pouch based um, uh, modules of which there's one two three four here in the middle of this you know battery sandwich is like a coolant plate like the jam in a sandwich and that coolant plate has coolant coming in going zig and zag and zig zag through the coolant plate and coming back out here and then off it goes to again header tank and radiator and pump that we covered before now what is in between there is essentially something that looks like that where the coolant will come in and go along a track like this and out there and that then takes the heat out of the batteries through the radiator system and back in. Now on a Tesla, slightly different because these are cylindrical cells. So on here, you've got a very thin um, uh, tube, if you like, that goes through and zigs and zags in between the, all, all the um, 18650 cells in this, which are the cylindrical cells, through there, through there, and back out there. And that's how a Tesla module is cooled down. So that's how you know they're cooled down, as I say, but let's talk about how they get heated up. And this little beauty here is a Tesla battery coolant heater. And you've got your coolant coming in here, going out there, and orange, high voltage. Uh, that's going to the element that's in here. And essentially, all that's happening is the coolant is getting heated up by the element and coming out there. Same kind of principle as a kettle, if you like. And that is pretty much thermal management on a battery. The only other thing I should mention as well is pump wise you need a much smaller pump uh, than the one for um, your motors if you like and that is because it's obviously 
running less flow rate, but more importantly, a lot less pressure. You do not want high pressure coolant system going through batteries, because again, seals will pop, and the worst thing you want is coolant all in your battery pack. So most people run these as, as an open system. That means they're open to atmosphere, therefore no pressure apart from the actual pressure that's coming from the flow of the coolant. So there you go. That is motors and batteries, and the other thing, which you also need to cool down in electric vehicles, are all the ancillary items, like this DC to DC converter, which converts 400 volts DC down to 13.8 volts to charge up the 12 volt battery. I know, 12 volt batteries in electric vehicles. We're still using 12 volts, unfortunately. Um, and chargers and other electronic devices that have inefficiencies in them will also need to get cooled down as well. So there we go. That is why electric vehicles have radiators. And you know, where the technology is at the moment is we're getting away from things like heating elements and you know, uh, more efficient um, uh, you know, ways of thermally managing things using heat pumps. So in around about 2019-20, the Model Y came out. That was the first Tesla, if you like, that had heat pumps in it. And now most Teslas and most, um, most electric cars, probably not, a lot of electric cars, let's say, use heat pumps to thermally manage things because they're more efficient, aren't they, Tim? You know all a bit about this in housing and schools. That's right. I think they're selling them now as uh, optional extras, aren't they, on a lot of electric cars? Right, OK. So... Um, I won't go into what a heat pump is. I'll just put, quickly put up a schematic there that you, that, so you can see it. But essentially, it's a reverse of a, uh, a fridge is probably the easiest way to put it. And it's a very efficient way of heating stroke cooling, um, you know, a system down, if you like. Um, so there you go. That is essentially why electric vehicles have radiators. No doubt going to be lots of questions on this, such as, can you heat uh, you know, um, the car using this? Well, you can, but don't forget, the temperatures are quite low. Um, so you know, it's not like the really hot coolant that's in an engine, and you can use a, a lot of that waste um, energy, if you like, as a heater. With an electric vehicle, there's some heat, but not huge amounts. Um, so certainly with heat pumps coming into effect now with electric vehicles, there are more efficient ways to heat um, the occupants. But uh, anyway, I'll leave the comments below for questions and I'll try to answer as many as possible. And I hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you on the next one.